What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of All the Mods Expert Mode. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we ended up getting ourselves our portal set up, right? So we have that finally open. We added some sparks to our mana pools over here so we can keep the portal running all the time. Uh, we made these elven mana spreaders, which I finally swapped out and we got those hooked up. So these can transfer mana even faster than the original ones. So I think we can probably... Uh, up our mana supply add more flowers if we wanted to and link multiple to each mana spreader I don't think that's necessary just yet, but it's just a thing that we possibly could do Or we might even be able to set this timer to be a lower delay so we can uh, Just generate the mana faster overall uh, So off camera here I went ahead and I made ourselves some spark tinkerers and I made some isolation upgrades for the sparks so the spark tinkerer will apply a upgrade to the spark or take it back off with a redstone signal. So yeah, we have two spark tinkerers, one for each of the different sparks on these mana pools. And if I press a button, it'll take the isolation spark off there, or I guess the isolation augment off there, which will stop these mana pools from drawing mana from this system. <laughs> so if we leave those off all the time, they'll slowly draw, this will slowly make more and it'll slowly eat through our toast that we only have right here. Otherwise we can put the isolation on there and these will just use the mana that's in their pools. And if those pools run out, then in the whole, then the portal turns off, etc. And if we need to fill them back up again, we can just press the button and then I'll draw from over there. Anyway, it's just a thing that I like doing just so we're not constantly drawing power from our main mana supply. <laughs> so today what I want to do is I want to start using some of the Elementium that we made last episode. Uh, we want to upgrade our Blood Altar using the Capacity Runes, I think is what it is. So yeah, the Elementium stuff here we can use to craft the Bucket, Extrapolated Bucket. And that's using the, yeah, runic capacity. That's using this craft here. So we need redstone, the bucket, we need ender chest, blank runes, and then imbued slates. So that seems pretty easy. But the ender chest in this mod pack is a little expensive because it requires the personal chest, which requires steel and these basic control circuits. So pretty much what I'd like to do to begin is to start automating a little bit of our mechanism stuff so we can start processing <laughs> this stuff a little bit better. Uh, so one of the first things that we should look at is upgrading our enrichment chamber or at least automating that. So let's make ourselves a interface. We'll grab one of these guys so we can start putting some patterns in. We should make some more blank patterns. We got one in the system. Let's tell the system to make, I don't know, 10 more so we have some extras. Uh, we're out of glowstone. Uh, that's another thing that we should do is hook up our mob farm <laughs> to our system. I haven't ran the cable over here just yet. We do have the cable ran to, I think, right under here, but it just needs to go a little bit further Oop. to attach to this guy. Anyway, uh, let's just grab some glowstone dust. All right, that should be good enough. We'll go back downstairs and we should be able to craft this thing up. All right, put that in there. Cool. Right, so we want to make blank patterns. And yeah, we should have everything ready to go for that. So that'll cook up. I think it's got to do a little bit of the laser stuff over there and then got to run through our alloy smelter and all of this. So it'll take a minute for all that to happen. So while we're waiting on that, we can start making some of these recipes. So I would like to, uh, yeah, use the enrichment chamber to take coal and turn it into the enriched coal. I think is what it's called. I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, it'll be a little bit more resource friendly. Coal really isn't that important, but other things like diamonds and gold, a little bit more important to uh, put it through here. So let's do that. Enrichment chamber, we will put one piece of coal in here. That'll turn it into a compressed carbon. It's the item I was looking for. So one coal will turn into one compressed carbon in that machine. All right, so we can also uh, put the interface on there and get that hooked up. So that was this one, the enrichment chamber. Okay, so we want this machine to accept items from the top, right? Input from the top. We want it to output, I guess, to the back, and then we can use some kind of a pipe to push it back up into here. Maybe, hmm, how do we want to do that? 
Uh, yeah, I guess we could do, yeah, we could do that. That'll be fine. So out of the back, we'll do output. Energy, we'll turn that off. Output, we'll turn that off. Uh, all right, so input from the top, output to the back. Then we can use conduit to try and make that work a little bit better. So ME conduit. We're going to need some item conduit as well. I think that's all we need to do. And we'll break this connection. We'll replace that with an ME conduit. And then we will put some item conduit there and there. This will be on extract, always active. And this one will be on insert. Okay, so that should complete the auto crafting for that. Yeah, I think that'll be just fine. Okay, so now we can do that. We should look at getting the rest of those things auto crafted. But when we get to that point, we'll start upgrading to it. Uh, so now we want to take a compressed carbon. Plus a uh, iron. We want eight iron ingots. Let's grab eight of those. One of these compressed carbon will do eight iron, by the way, if I didn't say that, because <laughs> I don't think I did. Uh, so that's why it's a little bit more efficient to use the compressed carbon. So yeah, we can put that into our metallurgic infuser. So a compressed carbon in here does 80. And I believe that'll do eight iron into enriched iron so we want to make sure we have that set up over here okay so we'll set up the auto craft for that one as well so those guys will turn into eight of these okay and then we can do probably another compressed carbon plus eight of those did i oh i already have some extra compressed carbon in here i didn't realize that uh, so yeah, more compressed carbon plus eight of those or is going to equal steel dust. And then we'll have to set up a recipe for the steel dust to smelt that into the steel ingots. And then we have automated steel production here, which is going to be pretty awesome. Now we can upgrade those mechanism machines to factories and we won't have to change these recipes at all. It should all work just the same way. Okay. So let's put these patterns in here so we can do the auto crafting. So this one needs this one, and then we have those two patterns, which I guess are going to go on here. So we need another interface. Another interface. I think we're also going to need another ME cable, ME conduit. Then we're also going to need more item conduit. And we'll just set that machine up the exact same way we did the enrichment chamber. So we'll just go into the, the config here. I don't want all these things turned off. Um, oh, you know what? This machine has two different inputs, doesn't it? So this might make it a little bit more interesting. I'm not sure how we can get both items in there at the same time. We might have to set up a machine, a metallurgic infuser for each different type. Or there might be another way to do this. I'll have to figure that out. Anyway, let me go ahead and just set this thing up so the output is in the back like we did before. We'll have the interface on top here. All right, we'll break this cable and set that up as a conduit. And we'll do... Oh, you know what? We need another... Yeah, we need another ME cable here. And we'll just run that cable up into the back of this interface like we were doing before. Okay, anyway, let me go ahead and mess around with this a little bit and see if I can get this thing to work because I kind of feel like this is not going to work. Um, yeah, let's see if we can get this to work and we'll be right back, guys. So I spent some time here thinking about these machines. I know we set it up differently in the past, but I thought we could set it up uh, the way we were doing it before. just doesn't seem to work. So these mechanism machines do require... Uh, the special items to go into one side and then they require the item that you're infusing to go into another side. So we changed up our recipes here. So it's just eight iron ingots equals eight enriched iron and then eight enriched iron equals eight steel dust. It's the way we have our pattern set up now. And then we have this completely filled with an export bus on the back here. So an export bus exporting compressed carbon with a crafting card in there. So we're trying to always craft these if there's none in the system. Uh, same thing on the next one over. We have one set up for redstone and we have a few items in here. So we're making one iron ingot equals an enriched alloy. We also have one osmium ingot equals a basic control circuit. So yeah, 
Uh, this one's always going to be filled full of the compressed redstone. This is always going to stay full. So this is redstone specific. This is carbon specific. And then we have two more over here, which I haven't done anything with, but one of them is going to be for the diamond. The other one's going to be the obsidian. Those are the four things that you infuse with mechanism. Uh, we do have the export buses and all this stuff set up back here, but just nothing hooked up for them just yet. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, I did have to switch the item conduit to the front. So we're pulling out the items, the resulting items from the front, and then putting them back into their interface up here. So it's essentially the same thing. It's just we had to use another face to put in the special item. So we had to do this kind of differently. Uh, we probably could have done that with just one interface, putting it into a chest, and then the, from the chest we could extract out with pipes instead of doing the interface and the export bus. But honestly, I think this is going to be just fine. We won't have to worry about it. So our enrichment chamber over here, um, these are fully upgraded, and I did fully upgrade all of these uh, metallurgic infusers over here as well. Yeah, all of these are completely upgraded, 8 and 8. Uh, so yeah, this is completely upgraded and we do have the recipe for both one coal equals a compressed carbon and one redstone equals a compressed redstone as well. So yeah, those are all pretty much set and ready to go. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, we had to add in three more machines to do what we wanted to do, but we got the job done and those other machines will be available and ready to go for when we want to start auto crafting the future materials. Like if we want to make the ultimate control circuit or whatever. Uh, so we were trying to make ourselves all the different parts for making the ender chest a little bit ago. And that requires draconium infused obsidian. I made a pattern for this. You know, in fact, I made a pattern for this. I made a pattern for the block of ender pearl and a pattern for this wool quartz heat cable. And then I went to go make the pattern for the personal chest. And it was one of those weird things where you set the pattern and there's no resulting item. And I was just like, what the heck? <laughs> so I logged down, logged back in, then it worked. And then I went to go auto craft that. And then the recipe for our wool quartz heat cable was missing. The recipe for the block of ender pearl and the recipe for the draconium infused obsidian. So I think I lost those blink patterns for these three items and I had to make them twice. I don't know. It's really weird. But now if we go into the system, we say ender chest and I want to tell it to make, I don't know, 10 of them. Yep, I guess we can't do it. <laughs> why Why not? That just worked a little bit ago. What's up with this? Ender chest. Make 10 of those. Oh, no. Am I got to log out and log back in for this to work again? Because I just tried this and it said it was okay. If I tell it to start, does it do anything? No, it just doesn't want to work. Why not? Let's try saving and quitting. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let's go back in here real quick and let's see if this does anything. I kind of feel like the recipe might work. I almost feel like we're probably not going to have those recipes that I just remade. Or maybe the game's going to crash. One of those three things. Device missing channel. Yeah? No? We're good? I'm not sure. Okay, it looks like we're fine. Ender chest. Ten. Now it works just by logging out and logging back in. Okay. So now that we got this working, um, yeah, string is one of those things that we're going to have to start dealing with. I did set up our quarry once again to get more gold. We were running low on gold and our quarry has now started going through one of the mine shafts or something, but it is collecting string a little bit. So I was able to grab some out of here and there was some over from our witch spawner where I guess naturally spiders to spawn in there and got killed. But we are running very low on string and we need string to turn to wool. So in order to like complete this auto craft, we're going to need some way to make string in the future automatically. So we might set up some kind of a farm specifically for flax or whatever it is that makes string in this mod pack. So that is a thing we might look at, or maybe we'll set up a spider farm. I don't know. So how are we doing on the ender chest? So we got seven of those. What's it currently crafting? The blaze cores. Okay, it looks like we're kind of waiting on the blaze powder to be processed. That's fine. And it's all done. Cool. All right, so now we got 10 ender chests. So, uh, whoops, the press the wrong button. The uses for those, again, we can use to make the runic capacity. So we're also going to want dreadstone, which we have in the system. We are going to want... Let's see the blink rune extrapolated bucket. We didn't make a recipe for that yet. So let's do the extrapolated bucket. 
need to make more blank patterns. Okay, we got 12 of them in the system. All right, so we got the extrapolated bucket. We can just stick that pretty much anywhere. I'll put it right here where I put the rest of these things for that same craft. Okay, what else do we need? Is that it? Block of inner pearl and the wool. Let's see, this, this. No, it doesn't. Oh yeah, yeah, we need to make that uh, block of vendor pearl. Craft one of those and the wool quartz heat cable. Wait a second, why am I doing it that way? <laughs> this is not the recipe we want. We want this recipe. Okay, so this recipe is the extrapolated bucket and the imbued slate. All right, so make one of those. And I don't know if we have an imbued slate. We have a demonic slate, which I think, yeah, we have to take an imbued slate and turn it into that. Okay, so I need to run some of the stone through this thing. Yeah, normally I keep a little bit of extra slates over here. I guess I haven't done that yet. I don't remember what stone it is because it's been a minute since we've had to make those slates. So let's take a look real quick. So the blank slate is made with dark stone. That's right. So dark stone. I guess I'll just run all 23 through there. That should be rather fast, I think. I'll probably... Oh, you know what? That goes kind of slow because the tier one and tier twos go pretty slow, don't they? I might want to put the speed runes back in here to speed this process up. But yeah, we have run out of blood back here in our in our drum. So the only blood that we have left is what's in the altar. So I'm definitely going to have to farm a little bit of <laughs> the villagers in order to get this going. Okay, well, anyway, let me go ahead and get those made. We'll make the imbued slates that we're looking for, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so I just made 14 imbued slates. I don't know if we're going to make 14 of these recipes, but we have those available should we choose to. So that's going to make a rune of capacity. All right, so we can just throw that in the system somewhere in here. I don't know. We'll just put it right there. So let's do, I don't know, like five or six of those rune of capacity. I think we can do five because we made five ender chests, right? And this recipe doesn't want to work. Oh my goodness, all the auto crafting in this is starting to get a little crazy. Like these recipes, they want to work for a little while, and then I have to re-log to get them to work after that. I don't understand why that is. How many blink runes do we have? We have eight of those in the system, so yeah, we should be good. Oh my goodness, okay. Well, I guess I'm going to have to re-log and craft those then. Okay, so after relogging, this appears to work. So yes, we can do the rune of capacity and this stuff. So let's craft those up. Awesome. So these should allow our blood altar to contain more blood. The more blood our altar contains, the faster we can push blood in and pull blood out. Like the more we can do at a time. There's also the rune of acceleration. I think it's what it's called. That's the other one we're going to want to do. Rune of Augmented Capacity. Hmm. Rune of... Not the orb. Oh my goodness. Is it... I can't remember. Let's do Blood and then Rune. Acceleration Rune. I guess I spelled it incorrectly. These are the other ones that we're going to want to, to get. So... Right now, it like pulls a bucket out every second. If we add these in, that decreases that by a tick. So we add like 19 of those, it'll pull a bucket every tick, right? So that's the other one that we're going to want to add to this eventually. But those also require us to go to Amorthal. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. That's the other dimension for um, Abyssal Craft that we have not been yet. So let's grab these guys here. We'll use our swapping wand. Once again, I use those. I use the swapping wand to put the speed runes in here. Let's swap some of these out for, for these uh, runic capacities. Okay, so we don't have any more of those blocks. So now if we grab, was it the Divination Sigil? I don't know where that thing is. Is that in my pouch? Maybe it's in my pouch. Yeah, okay, so here it is. If we do that, we should be able to click on the altar and it'll tell us, <laughs> if I click on it with the right thing, 
it'll tell us how much it can hold. So it says current capacity is 20 LP. And I do believe previous to us adding those in there, it was only 10,000 LP. Let's take a look one more time. So we'll swap those out uh, for the speed room. Okay, so we'll do that. We'll put this here. And this says, yeah, so each one of those appears to add 2,000 per, which is pretty cool. All right, so again, I'll place one down so I can use a swapping wand on it. There we go. And then now we can do 20. So that should allow us to push and pull one bucket, I think, from this at a time, or I'm sorry, two buckets at a time, right? Yeah, two buckets, four buckets, six buckets. So that's twice the speed as what we were able to do this before. So that will allow us to craft things a little bit easier as we're doing our auto crafting, like for the draconium and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I think the acceleration rune, this is one of those things that we're really going to have to look at that does require the demonic slate, which is the next after the imbued slate in order to craft those. This also requires Kraken shells, which is nebulous heart. We have a bunch of those in these Kraken shell fragments, which is squid beaks. So we'll probably have to set up some kind of an auto uh, squid farm in order to do that. Slime pearls we're getting from our slimes. Anything else crazy in here? The fertile essence, more slime pearls, green rib and catalyzing gland, which comes from creepers. So there might be a few different uh, mob spawners we'll have to set up for this. So that's something we'll definitely be looking at in the future. All right, guys, so since we were talking about the Dreadlands just a little bit ago, since we were looking at the Rune of Capacity, since that does require the Dreadstone, I was like, you know, we should probably look at progressing through this a little bit more. We came to the Dreadlands area. There's our portal. We mined some of the Dreadstone, and then we pieced out. That's all we ever did. So I did set up a waypoint uh, to the Dreadlands now and the Abyssal Wasteland, so we can warp there whenever we want. We don't need these portals anymore, so that's kind of cool. And then let's go ahead and set this thing for warping back home, just in case. So let's go up. Yeah. So <laughs> on the surface here, there's these weird things. It's called a Dread Spawn. And these guys are dropping this Dread Fragment stuff. Uh, yeah, we kind of need the dread fragments in order to upgrade our abyssal wasteland staff of rending to the next tier. So dread fragments plus those dread stones plus a shadow gem in the ritual is going to uh, make our dreadlands a staff of rending. So that has zero out of hundred on everything except for the last one. So it's the same thing on both of these, but I believe we need that in order to make the dreadlands essence. So I don't know what these guys are. I haven't looked at them. Those are some kind of golem and they don't appear hostile. So the things that I'm noticing is there are rock hives around and then iron and coal nearby. It seems like there's a lot of those around. So we could come here and farm uh, the rocky bees this way. That'd be kind of a good way to get them. Uh, okay, so that's with night vision on, not much better. <laughs> Looks like this is a different biome of some sort. This is a Dreadlands Mountain we were in and then this is Dreadlands Forest. I'm not sure if the leaves or the logs or anything like that are important to us, but this is an interesting biome. What are these particles? Are those bees? Maybe that's bees. All right. I thought there was something special happening there. Yeah, very, very interesting <laughs> how this all looks and stuff. Okay, so Spawn of Chagroth, I guess is how you pronounce that. And what are you? A dreadling. So it looks like this thing's walking around on its knees, maybe? <laughs> That's weird looking. All right, let's just kill this thing, get rid of them. Yeah, now that we have flight and we have uh, our saturation always full, we really don't have to worry about dying too much. Now, that's weird. That's Shoggoth ooze, but I didn't see a Shoggoth here. I wonder what's producing that, because was that here just a second ago? Oh no. Hmm. Oh, I. Oh, these guys have group aggro. That might have been a mistake. Okay, so what are these guys dropping here? They are dropping the chunk of Abyssal Knight. Interesting. Okay, so uh, we need to set up the ritual here. 
Uh, I will go ahead and grab the materials for that. We'll set up the ritual stones. You just got to place the stones and click them with the Necronomicon, I do believe. And we'll look at doing this other ritual. All right, guys. So it's been a little bit of time since we last did this Epistle Craft stuff. And I was kind of doing this out of order. I kind of thought that we set up the ritual and then we upgraded the book from the ritual. But what it turns out is that we have to use the Staff of Rending on Monsters to get ourselves these essences, right? Um, as you charge up the wand, as you right click on enemies, the Dreadlands energy, for instance, is gaining. Once it gets to 100, we get one of those essences. Once we get the essence, we can wrap it with the Dreadland fragment. Like if we go to uses here, we can make the skin of the Dreadlands and the uses for that. We need eight of those total in order to make the Dreadlands Necronomicon, which can hold 20,000 of the energy. I believe we need that Necronomicon in order to set up our ritual, which I have placed over here. I don't know why I'm on fire, by the way. I think that monster that I'm attacking just set you on fire for attacking it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I set up the ritual here and I was like, why when I shift right click on this thing is it not working? It's because we have the wrong Necronomicon. I can only imagine. Um, so I guess I can use some of these other enemies that are probably not as ridiculous that will keep me on fire, but they do die. That guy that I was hitting over there is not dying. I don't know what it is. When I looked at this guy earlier as well, uh, oh, that's called a Dread Guard. So I guess he just had a lot of health. I figured that this guy was not <laughs> going to die ever. I guess we just got very lucky. Dreaded Abyssal Knight Helmet. Interesting. All right, so we got five of those things. So I just need to keep attacking these monsters. Was it these things that were setting me on fire? Hmm, I'm not sure where I kept getting set on fire from. But, uh, yeah, as I was attacking that guard, it definitely <laughs> kept killing me. Or, uh, I guess setting me on fire kept reapplying that damage. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Try and get all eight of those. We'll make the skin of the Dreadlands and then charge up our Necronomicon. And we'll be back, guys. All right, guys. So we farmed up all the different bits and pieces for our Necronomicon here. I was just kind of playing around with this for a second. So it's got about 11,000 PE in it. I was looking, can we accelerate these? And it looks like we absolutely can. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing to do. I mean, obviously we get these crazy effects nearby when we accelerate stuff. Um, so let's just kind of see, where's it at now? Yeah, I don't know if that's really speeding it up that much. Like it's making the beam go faster all the time, right? When I'm accelerating this, we can see the, the beam seems to be happening more frequently, but I don't really know if that is speeding up and <laughs> recharging. It's kind of funny though that it does work on that. I wonder, would it work better on the pedestal? Oh, it makes the book turn faster. Maybe we need to accelerate the pedestal. Maybe that's what it is. So we got 14,000 on there. If I accelerate the pedestal more, does that do anything for us? That's exactly what we needed to do. Okay, cool. So we can now make our Necronomicon charge faster simply by accelerating the uh, the energy pedestal that it's on. That is really, really awesome. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's so good. Uh, so, well, it seemed like it was working for a little while. Maybe what we were doing is we were charging up the pedestal that it's sitting on. And then we can accelerate the, the speed in which the pedestal gives the book the power. I'm not sure how this works, but... There was definitely something going on there, which was making it go faster for a little bit. And then it kind of slowed down again. <laughs> anyway, uh, so now that we have that, we should be able to start setting up our ritual in the Dreadlands. Yeah, we needed this book fully charged so we can make our ritual. So hopefully we can get that at the 20,000 because I think it has to be there. Does this say how much PE this? Yeah, the pedestal doesn't really see how much PE it has on it, unfortunately. Okay, let me finish this up and then we'll be back and then we'll see if we can make that ritual. All right, guys. So once again, in the Dreadlands, we have our Dreadlands Necronomicon now. So we should be able to shift right click this thing. There it is. It worked that time. Yeah, we should be able to shift right click that thing to make the recipe. Cool. All right. So we want to put four of the Dreadlands stone. We want to put three of the Dreadlands fragments. And then one of the shadow gems. And then I believe we have to take our abyssal 
Wasteland staff of rending, put that in the center, and then shift right click that with the Necronomicon. Yeah, it sounds like things are happening. It says it requires 2000 PE for that to happen and it should be done. There it goes. Cool. So now we have the Dreadland staff of rending. So that's pretty cool. So this contains only one shadow energy, nothing of the other type. So let's right click something and see how much that gives us. I can't do these blue guys. Let's try, let's try this sheep. This is a demon sheep. Okay. So one right click on there gives us three energy. So that's awesome. So every time we upgrade that, it just makes it go that much faster for us to collect these, these different essences and stuff. All right. I like it. I like it. Cool. So there is other rituals and stuff that we need to do here because we need to do the ritual to get to the next thing. But I think we have to go and find like the stronghold like we did that before. So we're going to have to hold off on that until next time. But yeah, now that we got this ritual set up, we should be able to go complete that. We might have to fight a boss here. Yeah, I don't really know how this all works. I'll have to look into it a little bit more. But yeah, we're going to go and wrap the episode up here for today, guys. <laughs> Lots of cool stuff. This Abyssal Craft, I like it. It's just a mod I've never used before. So every time that I get a chance to play around with it, there's always something new to discover. And these different mobs and craziness in these dimensions. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.